Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna show you how to build your very own fart odor remover for your car or truck. Yes, I know it sounds like a joke. Yes, I know it sounds funny, but I am being dead serious. This works so well, and it's gonna save you from the embarrassment of whoever smelt it, dealt it. So I'm building this pass gas odor remover because recently I went on a 12 hour road trip with my friend down the east coast and on the way we stopped at south of the border for lunch. Not thinking about the consequences, we had bean burritos and we filled up. Let's just say for the rest of that trip, every time one of us rolled down one of the windows, we knew what that meant. So being the problem solver I am, I thought how can I get rid of the smell when somebody farts and here's what I came up with. To visualize a fart, here's some smoke. And when I flip this switch, a vent at the bottom of the seat sucks the past gas right out from under you. And then in the seat, there's a charcoal filter that removes the odor so there's no smell. Well today, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that. So if you or your passenger think you're about to pass some gas, don't worry about it, flip the switch and boom, no smell as long as you're quiet about it. Nobody will ever know. So let me show you how we're gonna build this. And here are all the tools and products you're gonna need to get this job done. As always, I like to put on my safety glasses to start. And now looking at the tools, these are very basic tools, common stuff that a lot of people have already, but more important are the products. Let's start out with the fans. Right here we have two 12 volt fans, similar to computer fans, so they're quiet, only 27 decibels. That means when you turn them on, you're not gonna hear it, which is exactly what you want, because otherwise you could just roll down the window. So 27 decibels, perfect level. Yet, these are 45 cubic feet per minute fans, so that means they're gonna be pumping 90 cubic feet per minute to suck that fart right out of the air. And a typical fart is less than one cubic foot, so it's gonna take less than a second to get all that filtered out through our filter material. Now, this is also super important. This is a charcoal filter. This is what you would find in an air purifier. And what it does is it adsorbs odors via chemical attraction. So the surface area of activated charcoal is insanely high. So it's gonna pull out that hydrogen sulfide and the methane that give farts their bad smell. Plus, it's a bit like the foam that's in our seat. So if we build this material up, you won't know that the foam is missing, yet it will breathe so our fan could pull that air through. We also have a fuse tap, a switch, and then the piece de resistance. At the end of the video, I have this fart spray. This smells really, really bad. So if I could squirt this in the car and not smell it, we know we did a perfect job on installing this system. So that's all you need. And I will link all these materials in the description from the carbon filter to the fans to the tools I use. That way you could replicate it exactly and get your own fart remover installed. So with that, let's begin. And we're gonna be doing the passenger side since we already did the driver's side. I'm gonna show you how to do the passenger side. And the first thing we need to do is remove the passenger seat. And to do that, there's two bolts in the back and two bolts in the front. So let's get started removing these two front bolts. These are 12 millimeter bolts and that's one removed and that's the other removed. Now slide the seat forward and let's remove both rear bolts. One and two. And with the seat free, let's carefully remove it from the car so we don't damage anything and place it on our workbench. All right, so with our seat removed and on our workbench, our fans are gonna go in the foam right about there. So what we need to do is we need to remove this lower portion of the seat. And to do that, there are bolts hidden behind this plastic here. And actually, I think they should be exposed on this side. Yeah, they're exposed on this side. You can see there's a bolt there and a bolt there. We need to remove those. So let's remove the bottom part of the seat. To do that, we need to unscrew two Phillips head screws holding this trim on. That's the first one. And then right over here is the second one. Then this seat back lever slides off like so and the plastic trim could come off. Now there's two bolts on this side holding the seat cushion in. One is right here, and the other is right here. Next, let's flip the seat around so we could get to the other two bolts on the other side, and these bolts are in the exact same spot as the other ones. So with the bolts removed, now we could remove the seat bottom. All right, and with the bottom of our seat removed, let's flip this over and see what we have to work with. And that is exactly what I was hoping for. We have vents in the bottom of our seat. So that is gonna help let the filtered air through. That way we don't have to drill our own holes. So now we need to get to that foam in there. And in order to do that, let's remove this upholstery here. And normally the upholstery has these hog rings right here. You can see those, they're kind of rusted. They hold it typically to this metal but these are definitely rusted and broken off. So it makes our job easier. We'll just have to replace those when we reinstall it. So let's peel back the seat cover like so. 
And now we have access to our foam and it's nice. The foam has little indents in it for where the holes are so we know exactly where we need to cut and where we have fresh air that's able to flow through. So now, just so you have an idea, this is what it looked like. So this is the back of the seat. That's the front of the seat, that's the back of the seat. Here's where the backrest would be. And this is kind of where you would sit right in here. And if we take a look at flipping this over, that's exactly where our vents are, right here. So just from looking at this, the fan's going right there. That looks perfect. We could utilize the vent holes, which are all in this area. That looks beautiful. Now what I'm gonna do is get a marker and we're gonna mark around the edge of both fans so we know exactly where to cut. And we wanna make sure that we're being accurate so we don't cut too large of a hole for these fans. And let's check it out. Perfect. And now comes the fun part, cutting the foam. Now we don't wanna to go too deep because we could get through to the other side. So at this depth, we should be good and we won't be able to go all the way through. So cut the foam on the line and I'm cutting more towards the inside of my line because I could always remove more foam later, but if I remove too much now, the fans might have a loose fit. Now peel away the foam that we just cut out and then remove as much foam as we can under that. That way the air could flow through this very easily. So let's test to see if this works. Get our fans in here and they fit pretty snug, which is perfect. Now we can take a nine volt battery. It's not gonna be as powerful as the car battery, but it should still work enough to let us test this. And it turns it right on. Look at that, nice and quiet, can't even hear them. And if I put my hand above here, even at nine volts, I could feel the air getting blown through the seat. Let me flip this over just to show you. And with the seat flipped over, right here is where the fans are pulling the air through. I could feel it and I have everything all set up. So they're both running right now. Let me show you how well this works. And again, with our smoke maker, you could see the smoke getting sucked into the seat. So this isn't gonna have any issues pulling a fart out from under you. And that works pretty good. Now these do not go in all the way. So there is a gap between the fan and the bottom of the seat. To fill that gap, we're gonna be using the activated charcoal filter. And this is also gonna give us our filtering capability to remove the smell. So we just wanna line this up over our hole and cut out a few pieces of charcoal filter to fit the hole. That way when we sit down, we don't even know that there's a fan under us. I'll just cut a few more pieces out and we'll layer it in there just like that. Then we could put the fans on top of that. And I'm gonna add one more layer of charcoal filter on top of the fans to keep the fans off the metal seat bottom. And this will be held in place once we sandwich it in between the seat bottom like so. So let's get this all set up. Perfect, now that charcoal filter is gonna be held in just by this being tightly bound to this. It'll add to more filtration and also prevent that noise from happening from metal to metal contact of those screws to the back of the seat. So that is exactly what we want. Now we wanna get this all tightened up and held into place. And to do that, we're gonna install hog rings with a hog ring pliers. And this is exactly how it came from the factory. Actually, first let's run our wires out of the seat hole here so we have access to them. Now anytime you run wires, sharp edges like this metal edge right here could cause a problem. Back and forth, back and forth over time will cause this to chafe and then you'll get a short. So what you use is a wire loom protector like this and just push the wires into the loom like that and work your way up the loom so the wires are completely protected. And now this plastic right here will protect it so it doesn't get chafed. So now we could reinstall our upholstery properly with a hog ring in each of those three spots. So grab your hog ring pliers, open it up, grab a hog ring, it fits right in. And then get the hog ring into the original hole in the seat cover and crimp it onto the metal seat bottom like so. Then do the same exact thing for the other two spots on the seat. You're just crimping the cover to the seat so it doesn't move. And that's all there is to it. Now that is sturdy in place. Let's do the other side. So crimp four hog rings into place on this side of the seat. Flip the seat around, and then crimp four more hog rings on this side of the seat. Beautiful, that is all there is to it. Now our upholstery is nice and tight, and that looks great. Let's install this into the bottom of the seat. So let's set the seat up on the workbench, and the seat bottom slides right in. Now we need to align the seat and the holes in the bracket, and then hand tighten the bolt into place. Same for the other bolt, line it up, and then hand tighten it. Then we could torque both bolts down to spec so we know they won't come loose. Now let's flip this around and repeat. Tighten the bolts down by hand and then torque them to spec. And I hate putting things back dirty. It's all dusty and grimy all in here. So before we put that cover back on, let's grab some soapy water and a brush and spray down this grimy seat bracket. Then use a brush to agitate all the dirt and finally we could wipe it clean with a paper towel. Now we can install our side trim. We'll get that in place like that. Just test fit it up. 
Perfect. Now's a good time to install our switch. I want to have a nice discreet spot where you can flick it on and flick it off without anybody knowing. And this is perfect right around here. And if we take a look right here, peel this back, beautiful. You can see there's a nice big cutout right here so we could drill into it. And there's a big cutout right in here so we won't have any clearancing issues. So I think that right there looks perfect. Let's make a mark and drill our hole. So we'll start by drilling a pilot hole, which is using a small bit just to get this hole started. Good. Now we're going to use the full size drill bit and we need a hole that this will fit in. So if you look at this drill bit, it fits perfectly. So use this bit to finish drilling. And that looks pretty good. So let's see how well our switch fits. We'll get that in here and beautiful. Look at that. Now we can get the on off placard and put it on the switch. This only goes on one way. Then we can get our fastener nut, tighten that down all the way so it's nice and snug and holds that switch in place. Now before we install our plastic piece here, we wanna wire in our switch. So what I have are two long leads that we're gonna wire up just like that. So I'm gonna use this terminal end and this just slips right in like that and then crimp it down. Always do the pull test to make sure it doesn't come off and that is good. Now we can take those terminal ends and screw them into the switch. We just need to make sure both of these wires are secured. Good. Now with both of our wires securely fastened, we're gonna add a wire loom to protect them. Just work that wire all the way into the split of the loom. And there you go, with our wire loom installed, this wire won't get pinched on the seat when we move the seat back and forth. So now let's install our seat trim. So sneak the wire loom back under the seat so it's out of the way, and then snap the cover into place. Finally, screw the front screw, and then the back screw, and then push the seat adjustment handle on, like so. And there we go, let's take this and install it into the car. Be careful not to damage anything as you put the seat back in. And now we can tighten down the front two bolts to hold the seat in, and finally tighten the rear bolt. All right, with those bolts screwed down, our seat is now bolted in and we're good to go. And check this out, our switch is nice and discreet off to the side here. Good clearance, easy to get to. Now, one last thing, you saw I didn't bolt in that last bolt. Well, that's because we're gonna use that as a ground, so we're gonna hold off on that. And now comes the fun part that everybody gets so nervous about, it's not bad at all, and that is wiring. We're gonna be using a fuse tap, and it's just one wire that we connect to the fuse box, which is underneath the driver's side and that one wire is gonna run right to here. Super simple, so let me show you how to do that. Let's get to the fuse box underneath the steering wheel. Now with our fuse tap, we could tap into any of these fuses, but I'd rather try to find an open fuse slot and use one of those. Now the idea is, with the ignition on, we want power to our fans, but with the ignition off, we don't want power. So to find the right fuse to tap into, we're gonna be using a multimeter set to 20 DC volts. Now grab your fuse tap, and we're gonna use a five amp fuse because our blow are one amp each, so two amps total. Five amps is the smallest fuse we have. And then let's place this in a random slot like that. Then grab your ground clamp from your multimeter and we're just gonna ground it to something metal. Now the key is out of the ignition, so let's get our red lead and connect it to the fuse. And you can see we have no voltage. Now if I turn the key to the run position, check it out, we have voltage, beautiful. So that means this gets power only when the key is in the run position. And now we know which fuse slot to use. The next thing we need to do is grab a long wire, one that you could run all the way to your seat. And the nice thing about this fuse tap is it comes with a crimp already built in. So just slide that in there like that, and then we'll crimp it down like so. Look at that, perfect. So let's go plug this in. Make sure you plug it into the correct slot. Good. And now let's run the wire behind the dash, making sure it's away from any moving parts like the clutch, brake, or accelerator. Now we can run it up into the center console area so there's no slack. Good. So the wire is getting run all the way underneath the center console to the back and then down underneath the carpet to right here. And then we could pull some of this out. There we go. Now let's run our ground wire. This is gonna connect to this bolt hole right here, but before we connect it, let's clean the metal surface off with some 180 grit sandpaper since this is rusty. Good, now let's get the ground wire and bolt in place and bolt it down. Next, we wanna connect our ground wire to the black ground wire on the fans, so let's crimp on a spade connector like that, and then we can connect our ground wires together. So now we have our power wire from the fuse, our power wire to the fans, and then our switch. So we need one fan to switch, and one power wire to switch. 
and then we're done. So I'm gonna crimp on spade connectors to the ends of the fans and the switch and then connect them. Now let's crimp the power wire and the other switch wire and connect those as well. Now let me show you what's going on here. We have our power wire coming from the fuse block which goes into our switch and then coming from our switch it goes into the fan and then the fan is grounded right here and that completes our circuit. That's all there is to it. Let's try it out. All right, my first time sitting in this seat and it feels pretty good. The switch is easy to get to and I can't even tell there's fans built into the seat, which is exactly what we want. Now to prove this works, I have a smoke machine. So I'm gonna fill the area with smoke and then let's turn on the fans. And check it out, those fans suck the fumes right out of the air and they are silent gives new meaning to silent but deadly. Now it's time to put my money where my mouth is and we're gonna be testing this out. I heard this smells horrible. All right, it's time to give this a try. Gonna waft it towards <coughs> Oh man, oh that's horrible. Oh man, I am dreading this. This stuff smells so bad and I'm in an enclosed car. So I'm gonna make sure the fan is on. Good thing I checked because it wasn't. Now it is and here we go. Oh man. Oh, come on. Okay, I can smell it a little bit, but it's not strong at all. And the smell's gone. Oh man, how cool is that? If that doesn't prove that this works, I don't know what does. Go get yourself one of these and spray it in your car, you'll never do it again. That is not bad at all. That is so cool this works. So there you go. The proof is in the pudding, and that worked beautifully. This is such a great design. Let's flip this off. And the best thing is you guys can make this at home yourself. And if you don't want it to suck the air out, you could flip it around, and then now you have cooled seats. Easy as that. But I'm telling you, in the future, cars, especially luxury cars, are gonna have these. And then hopefully maybe we could get them so that every new car will have one. Actually, Alex from Car Throttle is gonna help me do just that. He came all the way from the UK to meet me at my driveway to help me bring these fart odor removers to market. He actually just sold his pride and joy to fund this. So this is no joke. You're gonna wish you had these in your car the next time you go for a ride and need to pass gas. As always, hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button and all the tools and products are linked in the description so you could easily find them. Also, Alex's announcement video for selling his car is linked right up on the screen. You could click that and get right to it. Stay tuned.